Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Lessons Learned. I'm going to now hand it over to Chris, who will be reading a passage out of Walden for us. Chris. Thank you for the handoff there, Randy. My name is Chris. Welcome back. Today's chapter is actually titled, Reading, which I will now do. With little more deliberation in the choice of their pursuits, all men would perhaps become essentially students and observers, for certainly their nature and destiny are interesting to all alike. Hi, welcome back, guys. Nice. Today, hey, we're talking you, uh, about... <laughs> if you like that oh, passage, that. go and click clink the link below. Clink the link. For Audible. Whoa. Down below. <laughs> we're not going to do the whole episode like that, because that would be awful. Uh, be chapter <laughs> reading. Reading. <laughs> clink that chapter link one. and get Audible. Clink the link. Free for... 30 days. 30 days. 30 Do days. It. It's an affiliate link, so it helps us out, helps out the podcast, Do it. helps out the show. Do it. Chris, Get what are we chopper. talking about today for real this time? Uh, for real, you can pay me to read to you like that. I charge more than a free link for 30 days, though, so it's about $30 per hour. But I will do per it minute. if you liked what I just did. Nah, per, 30 an hour is pretty good, man. You would have to pay good. me $30 a minute to listen uh, yeah. to that. <laughs> well, nobody wants to listen to you anyway. <laughs> anyway, today... That would be amazing to listen to. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Shut up, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today, talking about self-confidence and building self-confidence and how to do so and some examples we have learned would you say lessons we have learned oh we did the thing <gasps> oh, oh man, man. Organic, we, did really. the, we did the clink we did the organic we're gonna we did switch audible. the flip here we did the thing and the thing now we've we done did switch we, the flip. what are we in two minutes in, wow and we've done yeah. we're out of things to do Killing it. Bug facts. all right so i guess the episode's yeah. over <laughs> yeah all right see you guys <laughs> we've done all our right. work here <laughs> jared this is your topic and i'm excited to talk about it but yeah. you want to talk about it, so sure. uh, lead it off. What are we talking about? Yeah, um, so I wanted to ask you guys, when's the last time you've done something that was really hard to do, but you knew that it was the right thing to do? Like maybe Quit my you... job. Ooh, damn. Dude, he that's, had that. That's a good had, one. Oh, right out the gate. Oh, my God. That's that good. was great. Um, yeah. It, what was the question? Randy had it locked and loaded. I need it again. Yeah, when was the last time you did something that was difficult, that was really hard, um, and you didn't really have the confidence to do it? Confidence. But you did it anyway. I have to think. I have to think. Um, like public probably speaking, something with talking. To... I'm good at public speaking, so probably something with photography. I got it. I got it. I got paid to do a gig. Uh, downtown Omaha for a store opening and I was like I've never done a paid gig for, before like for an actual event um, and I did it and it was definitely imposter syndrome which we'll talk about later and whoever reached out to for help with that I didn't you know I wasn't sure if I could do it and I did it and it turned out great and I got paid and they loved it and it was all Gucci nice yeah and it probably built your self-confidence. The next time you go into something like that, you're like, oh, yeah, I've done this before. Like, maybe here's a couple shots from that shoot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, build your self-confidence. And, um, yeah, I mean, going into that situation, like, you can either have one of two outcomes. Either you bomb it and it sucks or you do great. And, yeah. you know, if the first outcome, you know, you bomb it, it's going to build up, like, your own like how you view your own work um experience self-confidence again but lessons learned cool. yeah yeah you're gonna have lessons learned from it randy dang randy's on fire right now i'm on it i had a red, red bull. bull yep yep <laughs> yeah you have those lessons learned to take into the next experience the next time you're doing a, a shoot uh at, at a different event or something um and one thing i want to harp on is like the uh, the building of self-confidence isn't really in the results. It's more so in just doing and taking action. Would you say it's in the journey and you have to enjoy the journey, which we've talked about. Oh, we are so good at this. Damn. <laughs> it's like we've done a whole episode on that. Okay. Go so one, it. one example is, uh, that made me think of this topic, um, was 
that I'm giving a speech tomorrow. So cool. I'm giving a speech tomorrow, and I, I volunteered for it. Um, and, of course, the day before right now, I'm like, man, I really don't want to do that. I'd rather just – we have the day off from work. It's Memorial Day. I just want to take a slow morning, sleep in, you know, stay up late playing video games or something. I don't know. Um, I don't want to, like, have to get dressed and shower. Gosh. Get and in my shave car and drive. On a day off. Damn. Yeah, yeah nope. it's like all this – all this stuff I don't need to do, but I volunteered for it. Um, mm. And I'm going to be talking to people I don't even know. So uh, that's, you know, something that I, well, I, I feel pretty confident in it, to be honest. But before, like if you rewind or look back like four years, I could not public speak whatsoever. Like the thought of recording on this podcast would terrify me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, you know, like in Airman Leadership School and stuff, all you do almost every day is like give speeches and stuff and talk to people and like an open forum or have discussions and whatever. So I've really built up that confidence by doing the thing, you know, every single speech I did in that, when we were in a uh, ALS, um, my heart was like going a mile a minute, you know, I didn't want to do it. I was scared. Like I was sweating. I could hardly talk because I was out of breath because my heart was beating. Palms so are fast. sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Mom's <sighs> spaghetti. Damn it. I like that sweater too. <laughs> ah. Wow. But nice. that's a great point. Yeah, so there's I don't, don't want to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually had this conversation. I uh, forget who exactly I was talking to cuz as you all know, I've got a terrible memory, but if you're listening and I was talking to you, just know I know the conversation, just don't know who you are. Um <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> We were talking about speeches and they were they were like, mm, I don't think it was you. Uh, they were it like, it wasn't. Okay. Oh my God. For the love of God, the Red Bull. <laughs> take a day. Take a day. It's been a while, but take a day. We were talking about that, and I discussed the techniques. You know, with the eye contact, you kind of scan the room like one at a time. You know, not like in sequence, like sequential. Um, like a but, robot. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, not like that. <laughs> but and you walk slowly, and you take your time. I remember. I'm an idiot, but I'm not going to tell you who it was. But I just I, I know I know who I was talking to now. Um, and it's it's really good skill. And it, you kind of you have to be thrown to the wolves. Like if you're uncomfortable doing something, chances are you're growing from it and it's going to benefit you unless you're just like, I, I don't know. I don't know a good example off the top of my head, but you are growing and you're learning from those experiences. So and that just builds your confidence, right? So like if you're afraid of public speaking, as I you know I've I've never been like super afraid of it, but I, I was uncomfortable, and get nervous. Um, but now with these techniques, it's like it's not hard. I don't mind doing it at all. Some people are aging older and younger. I mean everyone. They hit, public speaking is like one of the most nerve wracking things, right? And mm -hmm. like, did you used to feel like For that? For a lot there? of people, yeah. A big yeah. part of it is like being you know if you stumble on your words in front of a hundred people, you're like oh like this is the end of me. Like yeah. my, it's, my life is not, over now, but it really, yeah, all. everyone does it. People listening to you are like, man, this guy's got so much confidence. Even mm -hmm. if your heart beats, you know, 170 when you're just standing yeah. still, they don't yeah. know that unless you're physically palms are sweating. <laughs> See, I guess, I guess that's, um, one area where kind of being a goofball never, like I never had an issue with it because if I did screw up like, uh, in the middle of a speech, I was always pretty good at like being able to laugh at myself and like make a joke about it on the spot and then just continue. Um, yeah, it's, but yeah, I can see, happen? yeah, I can see where it's like hard for people because it is hard when there's a bunch of eyes on you and like, you know, you got to get up there and talk, but yeah, it's, that's, that is one area where I've never had a problem, but, um, to go back to your point of like, what's something difficult that you're going to do or, you know, have done recently. Um, not going to talk about the job too much because talked about that a lot in the past you know couple episodes and everything since it happened but um i'm gonna be flying across oh. the ocean to ireland um oh, with chris, chris. Okay. i mean we'll be meeting each other so i'm gonna be flying by myself across the ocean i'll be meeting chris Ooh. there uh that's kind of a big First deal time. for me because the the longest plane ride i've ever been on has been like here to omaha which is really not bad it's like three and a half or four hours Fuck you. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I try not. I try it's not like to curse anymore, man. But, on. Yeah. Oh my god. So like, that's like the <laughs> longest flight I've been on. So now this this flight is seven hours. Dude, shut up. Just it's. All right, I get it for you. It's different. Yeah, it's across the ocean. I've never been to Europe before, or the UK, mm-hmm. or you know anywhere across the ocean. You're gonna um, have so much fun. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited for you guys. Like, I'm excited. It's gonna be awesome, but there's also like so much apprehension with it at the same time because it's just it's a big step. It's a big thing. But I do see myself like, like Chris said, being able to grow from it. You know, I mean, Mm. I feel like that's a big stepping stone for me to doing you know other things in other countries like that. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, and are you? I mean, you're Irish, right? What are you? Uh, I never actually what are, had. What are you? I never yeah, actually had you? it done. I've. I'm told I'm like Irish and English. Yeah, well, I mean, mostly. look at you. Your name's Squire. Like yeah, that's you English. Were, you that's were a English peasant F. back in the day. <laughs> oh my god! No way. <laughs> Your Squire? ancestry can be dated back to peasantry. <laughs> Probably badassery. That's self confidence right there. Royal royalty. Um, but no, that is gonna be awesome. Yeah, I am super stoked for this trip, man. It's gonna be rad yeah. um yeah that's gonna be so cool and you know i was actually talking to my grandma and she was like you guys are both gonna grow from it and i was like yeah i've been like i've been there i haven't been to ireland yet but i've traveled a ton and you know haven't done it by myself but it is it's kind of on me because you haven't done it at all and i'm relying on the previous experience i have to kind of take lead and like book all the yeah. stuff we're doing right and then kind of take charge so it is different as well for me uh and it's gonna just it's gonna build both of our confidences confidence i sai <laughs> sure confidence-i? i don't know yeah, actually quit while you're ahead plural of confidence <laughs> i think is it like deer deer is just deer i think so oh okay <laughs> <laughs> you learn something nice. new every day okay all right uh um, yeah confidence will be built in both of us there yes and, and um yeah, so we'll be able to backpack. And, you know, I was actually just talking. Uh, I went on a date today. Again, a second one. Oh. And uh, we were talking about backpacking Europe when I get out. And that it's going to be really cool. So this is also, like, it's like stepping stones, man. Because I've been to Scotland, not backpacking. Now I'm going backpacking with you. And in two years, I'm going backpacking all over Europe, not mm-hmm. just Scotland. So like it just keeps building and building and building. And then pretty soon I, I mean already I've already traveled the world pretty much. But the world is your oyster at that point. Like what else can you do? Like just keep going and just it's stepping stones. Yeah, right? keep exploring. So, and that comes with confidence. Once you get confident, you step out of your comfort zone again and you're getting even bigger and bigger steps and bigger steps, accomplishing bigger things and your life is like you look down at the stuff you used to be afraid of and it's like, huh yeah look where i'm at now um yeah, I, go ahead i have a i have another story um go. unless you wanted to tackle on what chris just said right no now. go ahead i was going to change the subject so go for it mm. yeah i have uh, another story i thought of this actually like 30 minutes ago before, right oh. before we hopped on here hey. um it's a really embarrassing story about my confidence with with guns um mm. and firearms in general so growing up i i have to start off the story this way so you can like maybe kind of somewhat understand my uh you'll see um so i grew up and didn't learn anything about guns like until i joined the military like i knew i had never handled a firearm at all i wasn't taught about it or anything um and then i got into the military and then we did uh m16 we did training with m16 um, in basic training where we had to shoot them and there was a point at the range where uh, one of the MTIs called me over and with someone else and was like hey take this take this round over to the armor or whatever and like handed me I think it was like I don't know what the M16 takes 223 or something you know but I'm honestly not sure he, he put it in my hand and he was like be careful that's explosive and I had my palms open like this, and I had this like round of, uh, it was probably two, two, three in my hand, and I was like, "Is he being serious? Like, is this, <laughs> could this really explode?" <laughs> I'm like, "Should I will drop it?" I was literally like scared to death, because 
Yeah, because uh, I, I knew nothing about guns or ammunition or anything. I thought this thing was going to explode in my hands or explode if I dropped it on the ground. So it is five five six. I was oh, gonna yeah. say five, it's five, either two yeah. two three or five okay. five six. Yeah. Yeah. Um so <laughs> obviously I was not confident with guns whatsoever. <laughs> um and then, you know, my first time shooting M nine when I got to my first base and everything, I was still kind of hesitant. I was really uh careful and really slow with any movement that I made. Um, which is safe, which is good. But hmm. it it took me like I mean, I'm still not fully confident handling weapons, like handling firearms, but I'm getting there. You know, I've been shooting more times in the past year than I have my entire life. Um, mm-hmm. So basically, moral of the story is if there's something you aren't confident with, something you don't have much experience with. You just got to do it like you aren't going to you aren't going to yeah. buy your own pistol and go on the range and shoot expert like immediately. Um, you know, you have to put in the work put in the time do the hard work and put in the hours get there. something put devour in. we should yeah. get Dwayne the rock hole and the rock johnson on here. oh yeah <laughs> oh i miss oh. joe he's in spain yeah i miss joe anyway yeah <clears throat> joe come back i got two things number one i forgot <laughs> shot <laughs> him number one oh, i got it number one um i was shooting m9 for work and trying to get expert and you know to the chest one in the head and they came over to me about three quarters of the way through and they said hey bud how about you just aim all for chest because you're not gonna pass unless you don't <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> oh no so i finished it off i passed and I, I hit them all in the chest right i got it and then but that fueled me i was like damn i'm that bad so i practiced and then i took my time the next time the next year i went out guess we got expert your boy because i took the time that i needed i was like who cares if i take a little longer than everyone else and i'm the last one shooting i want to get expert and so that's what i did i just took my time focused on my breathing and really aimed and it was it was great it was i I had learned something and built my confidence to not be judged because everyone else is done already like it doesn't matter you're all still in it and like if you're the last one shooting it's like taking a test you shouldn't feel pressure if you're the last one because you might get the best grade out of everybody um, I actually always felt awful when I was the first one done. If I took a test and I was the first one, I was like, oh, God, I definitely screwed that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You always want, like, the middle was always the sweet yeah, spot. Yeah. But then I always got the worst grades because I either <laughs> didn't know it or I wasn't confident enough to keep going and, like, taking my time. Uh, yeah. When I, w- when I turned out, like, throughout the Air Force, I was usually one of the last few to finish my test, but I consistently got the best grades. Um, throughout like all of training so that's where i learned that too um so unless you guys want to keep talking about shooting i got a whole nother topic i would i kind of go about. for it send it cool ready ready <gasps> dating oh man i just told you i guys i, I finished you the second it. date yep <clears throat> um it was great very very easy to talk and it was it was uh it was good so who knows maybe who knows i'm not gonna say anything but a few weeks we'll see but do you guys ever get butterflies going on a first date? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Randy? Jared? I still cool. get butterflies. Cool. That's absolutely. Cute you have a fiance. That's adorable. Dude. Nerd. Wow. <laughs> you just got, you got, you got brownie points galore off of that one. I hope she <laughs> listens to this episode and like this part specifically. Um, <laughs> if she made it yeah. through the intro. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, um, okay, this is not yeah. the episode. Yeah, this is awful. I, um, I don't think many people listen past like 10 seconds. So Wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. I'm not done. I'm not done. I asked you a question. That was not my point. The point being is how many first dates does it take to where you don't really feel butterflies anymore because you're so confident and you know exactly what you want and you're not worried about wasting time. Like that is an issue, right? Like you don't want to just waste anyone's time, but you know if it doesn't work out things are going to be okay you just move on right that's the goal and for me i'm at that point where i'm not saying i've been on a ton of dates i just i i I take life as you know it's handed to me like if it doesn't work out okay cool if i can't be myself on a first date why am i going to be nervous like if i am myself and they're not attracted to that that's fine i move on they're not the one right um so I, I've kind of taught myself that over the past few years. And uh, I think that's a huge factor in confidence, especially if you're single or 
you know, in the dating scene, um, why be nervous? Just be yourself and, you know, things work their way out. So, yeah. Um, so actually I'm going to come back around to the, the dating side of this mm. with this, uh, per this like more of a personal story for me. Um, I, the Randy of two years ago had zero self-confidence in general, like generally speaking, dating work, anything, um, no self-confidence. And I think a big part of gaining it comes, I mean, obviously self-confidence comes from within. It is self-confidence. You generate it yourself. Um, it has to come, it has to come from you. And like, you know, you have to figure out what that is for you. And like, I know a big part of mine, I know for a lot of people, this is not the case. It's a shallow way to look at it. I was not happy with my appearance and you know, that was making me not happy with who I was. And I had no confidence. I didn't have confidence to talk to girls. I didn't have the confidence, you know, to say no to my job, even when I wanted to, um, anything like that. And, uh, a big part of it was like getting myself back into shape and eating better and going to the gym. And I gained so much confidence from that because it made me like who I was better. And I think that's the point that I'm trying to get to. It's like, whether it's a physical thing or a mental thing or whatever that may be for you, because it's going to be different for me than it is for you. Um, you have to like yourself. You have to be at a point where you like yourself to gain that self-confidence. So you have to figure out for you, what is that thing? And like uh, a big thing that I missed out on a few years ago, there was a girl that I really liked and I had no confidence to ask her out. Hmm. And, you know, and like I missed out on that and that really sucks because I think we could have, you know, dated and like been really good together. And, um, it was just because I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I had, I didn't have the confidence to do it. Yeah. I mean, physical appearance is, is what you make of it, right? Like if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you. I personally, uh, I'm not trying to get as big as Jared Rumsey over here and I Jared know I'll forever have. I'll forever have bigger triceps impossible. than Impossible. So I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> I love you, but It's not impossible. Yeah. I'm bigger than Jared now. Don't worry. You never yeah. will get as big as me. You're right. That's, you're right. That's you're a right. that's an Arnold quote from uh, Pumping mm. Iron. Damn. <laughs> that's mean. That hurt. That hurt. <laughs> Arnold's a Don't douche. worry, man. I got you because I'm bigger than him now. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> but no, like, and you have to set a goal for yourself and meet that goal. And I think that's what it comes down to is confidence comes from you meeting your own personal goals and feeling good about that. Um, you know, me, I'm not trying to get big. I'm just trying to be athletic and play hockey and bike. And if I can do that and I look and I'm, I, I'm not fat, like I don't want to have excess body weight. Right. But I'm happy where I'm at and I'm not as big as Jared. I'm not, I'm never going to have, a shredded body like Jared. Jared's like a Greek god over there. No wonder why he's engaged. But <laughs> yeah, dude. Now, do I get brownie points? What do I get? Stop. Right. right now. Okay. <laughs> he's blushing. Oh, it's so cute. But uh, you know, um, uh, the point I was trying to make, and like, don't focus so much on the specifics of like my story. Like, yes, for me, it was you know building self confidence started with getting myself, you know, getting myself back in shape and liking who I was better when I looked in the mirror. That's yeah. not the case for everybody. Some people that doesn't right. bother them, um, which is know, good. If, I mean, stronger, stronger to them because yeah, that's hard. That's very hard. Yeah. Um, if if you can cut out what people think, like physically, like that is yep. that's a power move, man. And you're mentally way ahead of everyone else. And you know, more power to you. But like, what if what if that person's issue is, you know, I don't, I don't like the job I have, mm -hmm. and that can that even that can be a big self confidence issue where it's like. You know, I'm not where I wanted to be in life. You know, for that person, that may not have anything to do with, you know, physical or mental means. It might just be because that's how things worked out for them. But they need to be able to do something about that situation. And that's where that self-confidence comes from. And then once you're able to get out of that bad situation, you gain even more from it. And that's like um, me getting back into shape really, in a way, changed my life. Because it gave me the confidence, number one, to start saying no at my job. And number two, to eventually quit and get a better job that I like far better. It's given me more confidence to talk to girls. It's given me more confidence to do things like fly to Europe, like buy a house. I mean, it it's all starts somewhere and then it just snowballs. 
facts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember um, being super self conscious about uh, my body, the way I looked, like in the beginning of 2015. Um, actually, in March, I remember like the exact place and time and setting where uh, where I decided to start working out consistently. And a lot of it, a lot of the drive was just because I was unhappy with how I looked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you're of course, um, like when you're deployed, uh, you see all the people like it's gym town, gym tan and laundry uh, <laughs> when you're deployed, especially oh, yeah. in the desert. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I started. Um, and, yeah, a lot of that drove from, uh, yeah, just being self-conscious. But, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, it just snowballs, and you start to notice that you get stronger. You start to notice you feel better. You have more energy. Um, start to look better. Mm-hmm. And, and then know, I focused on my diet as well. And then I just started to get more confident with, like, who I was. I'm like, okay, I'm able to take care of myself to where I'm producing – you know, an image that I like, even right. if it, even if it comes from, um, like a negative self-conscious. Point yeah. Of view. I've got, I've got a great, a fantastic topic. You just, you just sparked it in my brain. Um, one of the biggest and hardest things on, to do. On. I sparked it. <laughs> God. Okay. Boot him. Can we kick him out? <laughs> Maybe. Jared, you're booted. Jared, left the Jared, chair. you. This is this is not what we're here to do. do you are the weakest link. Like no. that. <laughs> you know you anyway, the lighter. Cool. Anyway, one of the hardest things to do, and one of the things that builds self confidence the most, is saying no to drinking because this entire country, the world, really is a culture of drinking and alcohol, and like you have to drink to have fun and party. Uh, and I have recently over the past year just been like, no, I'm, I'm not going to drink. Like, I'm good. And when people say like, uh, oh, dude, what? Like, just come drink. And like, they, you know, they peer pressure you into it. Like, no, man, I said I don't want to drink. And being OK with that and then having the the confidence to be like, dude, if you don't like standing your ground, basically, and be like, hey, man, like I'm, I told you I'm not drinking. I like, don't pressure me into this. Otherwise, like. I don't want to hang out with you. Like, do you see what's what you're causing here? Because I just don't want to drink. I'll hang out all day long. I'm just not going to drink with you. So don't feed me drinks. Um, you know, if I don't want to go downtown drinking, like I'd rather hang out in a more, you know, uh, I guess closer knit group and like do something more intimate. Like there's no issue with that. Um, so saying no to drinking and like all the peer pressure that's behind it and living the life you want to live and not wasting your time like drink i'm not saying it's a bad thing like a lot of people have fun but like i can count i i know tons of people in fact one of my like on a deployment you know one of our pilots was like i invited him out drinking back when i was still drinking and he said uh no i don't drink and i looked at his life and how successful he was and what he does with his downtime i was like damn that's like a role model and that's kind of in my head it, it kind of flipped like Oh, this guy's actually doing it. And on a deployment, nonetheless, where, like, Switch you want to flip. To drink. Yeah. Um, so the script was flipped. Oh. Um, but, yeah, it's it's difficult. And, like, I have the confidence now to say, no, like, I'm not doing that. I, if I don't want to do something, I just kind of I just kind of let it be known. Um, and that's difficult. Like, saying no to your friends or, like, you know, colleagues or something, it is difficult. Like you said, saying no to your job, like, that's a hard thing to do but when you know deep down like that you you just don't want to do it or it's not right it doesn't feel right and it's not going to lead to a successful life like why do it and yeah. have the confidence to stand up for yourself no and i i really like and as someone who used to drink a lot um can really play to your point of that mm-hmm. um that was a big that was a big part of it for me in the very beginning when i started all this was i realized like if I'm going to do this and like do it right, like the drinking has got to be, you know, cut back substantially. I don't not drink. Like I, I go out from time to time, but yeah, it's not like every like, week. We've got beers together, right? Yeah. Like I've yeah. Got, I still drink just 
I mean, yeah. there's even every once in a while, like, you know, yeah, I'll let loose and like get really drunk at a party or something, but it's not like, <laughs> but it's not like every weekend, like it used to be now it's, you know, once in a while, like a couple times right. a year, I'll, I'll really let loose and do that. It's not like all the time. And I, and again, and it's just, it came out of the realization of there's so much better use of my time and not yes. even just the time while you're out doing it, because actually that's to me, isn't the problem. Because, like, you know, you go out and you have fun with your friends, and that's great, and you need to do that and have that social interaction. The problem for me was the next day. Oh, it's horrible. Cause it's and like, it also comes with age, right? Like, when you're yeah. 22, no worries, man, no worries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're 28, 29 now, it's like, shit, dude, the weekend's gone. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, you know, that, that next, you go out uh, Saturday night, Sunday's done. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, I and I realized that, and it just got to the point where, like, it wasn't worth it, because I would stop and say, like, I want to do all these things tomorrow. And if I like go out and drink tonight, I'm not going to do them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? Like, it's just not worth it. And there was, I, I mean, there's even times like I've noticed it recently and you notice the change in yourself because there's been times where even I come home and just like, oh, I think I just want like one, one or two glasses of whiskey, hang out, watch some Netflix. And I just don't like, I just don't do it. Yeah. Like I think about doing it, but then I just don't do it because it's just like, it's not worth, it's just not worth it. Yeah, but the point being is like, like you gotta, if that's what you want, that's fine. Just let it be known. Like, hey, I'm not drinking anymore. So then, mm -hmm. like, your friends respect that. And if they don't respect that, and like they just you know keep peer pressuring you, like, maybe it's time to just like first off have the talk. Like, hey guys, this is what you're doing. I'm feeling pushed away. Um, anyway, not, yeah, that's a tangent. I think that is actually something we can do a whole topic on because I, yeah, I for sure last point and like then we're done with it but like that is one thing that i've noticed among a lot of my friends mm. like in the last year or like last couple of years that like 27 28 29 age group is mm -hmm. like i think they're starting to see the forest for the trees with that so it's like it's interesting when you see you know a lot of your friends starting to do the same thing that like you realize and it's like okay so i'm not crazy <laughs> yeah i think us five me Talon, Jared, Joe, Randy, we, uh, we're all kind of on the same page. Like I did feel bad. Like we went to go swimming with Jared yesterday. Right. So good example. This isn't what it was all based off of, but, uh, I was like, Jared, this isn't really my scene. And I, I think I'm just going to head out. And he was like, yeah, I get it. And like, that was cool. Like you need friends like that. Like that's important because you know, he, he wanted to have fun and like, you know, I wanted to have fun with him for his birthday, but like at a certain point, if it's just not your thing and you just don't want to do it, having that confidence to bring that up and be like hey man like like think of all the time you waste just kind of stressing like damn i don't want to be here why just leave just go do yeah. it like or be just confident. Don't go. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah hey sorry man like i'll support you in another way like for example i went yeah. shooting with jared yeah we still like, got to put some rounds down range yeah it was great was and like we still spent time together like there's other ways to do it um and and that's that's huge in confidence and that's what i've been working on personally i only keep talking about this because that's what I've personally been doing recently. So hopefully that uh, teaches you guys something or you get a lesson learned out of it. <laughs> Did it. Did it. Did thing yeah, thing. So really, so really uh, it's not, it's not in the result. It's not in the result of uh, going in the first date and then finding your wife right off the bat. Um, you know, it's not picking up a firearm and knowing how to use it like right out the gate. You know, you can read as many books as you want, but knowledge will not gain you confidence when it comes to actually doing the thing. So I can read all about guns. I can read all about gun safety, the mechanisms uh, of a specific make and model, um, all the ammunition. Like, I can learn all this stuff, all the tactics, but if I don't do it, then the second I pick up a gun, I'm going to be like, oh, God, what is this? And all the knowledge is just going to yeah. go away. Yeah, it doesn't matter at that point. Yeah, you can you can watch all the videos on YouTube about. I mean, there are a ton. Like we're overloaded with it, right? You know the uh, create the love. You know, talking mm -hmm. about uh, Matthew Hussey is a pretty pretty big guy in like relationship talk. Um, there are all these all these uh, wise people that tell you like this is how you should act in front of women. This is how you should how to look more attractive and look more confident at the bar. Stuff like this, but. You can have all of those tips and pointers and have all this knowledge, but the second you go to do it, you're just going to be like, oh, what was that? What was, 
what was that thing? And then you go to the YouTube video at five mm-hmm. minutes and 21 seconds <laughs> yeah. into the video. I do like, that all the time with photography. Oh, yeah, that's what it all is. All the time. You're sitting at all the bar the like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Repetitions. So, it's in repetitions. So I got, a f- I got two more talking points. One is the photography. I mentioned the imposter syndrome. I talked to, remember Jesse Wells? I know yeah. you do, Jared. Yeah, I was like, hey, man, like, I want to start, you know, making money. I want to do, like, maybe wedding photos and, like, you know, start get, getting getting some experience and, like, building a res, uh, a portfolio. Um, I was like, do you ever feel like you're just not qualified, like you're not good? And he's like, it's 100% imposter syndrome. And, yes, I still feel like that, and I've done, like, so many. It's like, damn, okay. that Like, you need to hear that sometimes because you can do it. Like, you're going to fail or you're going to do great. Uh, and it's usually the latter. Like you probably excel and do better than you think. The next point is it is self-confidence we're talking about, but how good does it feel when someone says, Hey man, you've been working out. Like you're looking good. feels great. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like, Hey, are you losing weight? Yeah. So being the person that can help build someone's confidence is also massive. And if you have a minute of your day, and you help someone feel better about themselves, do it. Like, why wouldn't you? It feels great. Like, today, I mean, I'll bring it back in. On my date again today, we were walking, and I, I turned to her. I was like, hey, you want to hear a weird compliment? She's like, yeah. I was like, I love the way that you walk. Like, you carry yourself, and it is very attractive. Like, and she's like, I've never heard that before, but, like, thank you. And, like, it wasn't – I didn't make it weird, right? It wasn't weird. Like, that sounded a little strange, but it was better in the moment. Um, and like, I, hopefully that builds confidence. And like, you know, like that gets the brains going, like, Oh, I do carry myself. And like, it's attractive. Confidence is attractive, isn't it? Wouldn't you boys say? Yeah. I would say that's a, that those are examples of external factors that kind of build your confidence. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, the point being is if you can make someone's day, do it. And if you could help build someone's confidence, do it, do it. But just know that confidence does come within. So you shouldn't need the external stimuli, stimulus, stimuli, plural, hey, oh, <laughs> for to build your own self-confidence, right? So it comes from within. And make those goals for yourself. Make those tiny goals. Accomplish them. Feel good about yourself. And then, like Randy said, it just snowballs. Um, so with that being said, unless you boys have any final points, you should probably go ahead and wrap it up, eh? Let's send just it. Just do it. Bring it home. Sick. Yep. So hopefully you guys uh, learned a thing or two. I uh, got the energy back going. Sorry, if we seemed all over the place, it's because uh, <laughs> we're all drinking energy drinks. We're all drinking energy yeah, drinks. Yeah, it is uh, 6 p.m. on a Sunday. It's 7 p.m. Silly. It's 8 but, p.m. Yeah. Oh, dang. <laughs> Jared doesn't even know what time it is. Yeah, but thanks for listening. Thanks for bearing with us. I hope you found some humor in the beginning of this because we were talking like this, and it was pretty funny. Anyway. It's pretty great. It was, it was awesome. I think it might be one of the best intros we've done ever. <laughs> the new intro, the new standard, right? Um, but no, so build confidence from within. You know, we talked about it. I'm not going to rehash all the talking points. You can rewind if you want to. And you can also click the link below for Audible free for 30 days and help support the show. There's also a oh, Patreon link below. If you want to support us and you like what we're doing, and if you want to hear topics, I'll let Jared take it away for the rest of the outro. Thank you, Chris. This is Jared. Thank you for (laughs) tuning in for this episode of Lessons Learned. He just can't let it go, Jenny. (laughs) Just (laughs) don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and share this podcast with your friends. And also, leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Are we on iTunes? I don't know. Oh, we're on everything, silly. We're on everything. We're on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, leave us a five yeah. star rating and review on on uh, Apple Podcast, um, yeah, and YouTube, yeah. and everywhere, everywhere. All things, all the Go things. Everywhere. Look at me in my face while I confidently tell you to do it. Confidently, <laughs> keyword confidently, not him telling you. This has been lessons learned, and until next time, see, see ya. <laughs>